We started hunting uh, because of our dad. Well, that was 55 years ago, roughly, mm -hmm. and I can still remember the first pheasant that I shot and what a thrill it was. And from that point on, you know, I was, I was hooked. I got back from my last Afghanistan trip uh, at the end of 2015 and I moved home to Iowa. A few weeks later, I was really restless at the time, couldn't focus, I was anxious, dealing with a few unhealthy coping mechanisms. Somebody gave me a bird dog and I had that dog and I thought, I'm not gonna do him justice unless I learn to hunt or learn to at least shoot a bird for him every once in a while. For me, the gift of a dog was really the catalyst into this world. Brady was special. He taught me more than I ever taught him when it came to upland hunting. It might have been my birthday. It was it was opening day in Iowa. And I spent most of the day in a tree stand. It was warm, it was sunny, the wind was blowing, the, the leaves were wrestling a little bit. The tree was swaying, and I just remember feeling relaxed for the first time in years. I had a book with me that I never cracked the spine of. I just sat for hours and enjoy the scene around me. And I hadn't felt that kind of peace since I could really remember. When you talk about the journey of your life and things that change and things that affect you moving into the future, that gift of that dog changed the trajectory of my life. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody that's had a dog like that understands the emotions involved. Uh, but he was special. We were talking over the other day, and I think I remember in the late 80s in Kansas, uh, we were out pheasant hunting, we came upon uh, a Pheasants Forever sign, and Mike and I had been members of Ducks Unlimited all these years, and we go, what is Pheasants Forever? But uh, we both were intrigued, because every time we saw that sign, it was good habitat and, and pheasants. I got involved with Pheasants Forever as a college student. I was working for the County Conservation Board and saw the difference that the local chapter was making in acquiring more public land. And I wasn't a hunter at the time, but I wanted to support an organization that was adding access for people like me. In the early years, all about hunting, but then finally we realized, no, it's about the habitat. So the Watt property is about uh, 200 acres, and uh, you know, it was just a monotone CRP grass. So we went in and developed it this spring with the help of the uh, Pheasants Forever biologists. They gave us a plan, and so we took it from, you know, bare earth to uh, brood cover, nesting cover, winter cover, and food plots. We're here for the bigger picture, and that is to preserve the declining uh, natural prairie and uplands that uh, are in this area. Our goal is to, you know, 
to pass it on down to uh, somebody like Pheasants Forever and, and it'll be open to public hunting from that point on. I think protecting wild lands and making them publicly accessible is a form of service, uh, not just to the country, but to future generations of hunters, to the wildlife, to the landscape. I think it's a responsibility that we all have to do our part. And so whatever small part that can be, uh, it all contributes and we're trying to do our small part with uh, our uh, land projects. One of the biggest things I learned from the military was that I need to have work that is meaningful to me. And being a regional field rep, Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever, allows me to work with our volunteer groups throughout the Western states, accomplish their habitat missions. We get to bring new hunters and conservationists into the fold. And I feel incredibly lucky for that. but there are ways to bring people in and offer them those opportunities and share our love of the outdoors and our love of bird dogs and help these people, these friends of ours, find their way to answer the call. The more people we can get involved, the better we can protect and preserve these lands that we cherish. Whatever your skills are, they're valued and they're welcome. Maybe you're interested in land acquisitions and preserving key habitat uh, in perpetuity. Maybe you want to work on educating the next generation in conservation or the ethics of hunting or just get them into hunting and, and outside. Okay. Uh, maybe you're more interested in the legislative initiatives that we have going on in Washington, D.C. or at the state level. There are countless opportunities to get involved locally, regionally, nationally. And if you have the means and interests, find the one that speaks the loudest to you. Answering the call for me means helping remove those barriers so that people that maybe aren't comfortable asking for help or aren't comfortable around guns or whatever that barrier might be, um, are able to come to us, come to our chapters and learn what they want to. Now is the time to get the message out that we need to save this land. You can join me in answering the call by contributing to one of our national campaigns, by getting involved with the chapter. Um, even if you don't have the financial resources, you can introduce someone new to the Uplands. I think a gift to others is a gift to yourself and you'll get as much as you give when giving to the call to the Uplands campaign. Now is the time and the call is being put out uh, for all of us to come together in any way that we can. It's time to answer the call. It's time to answer the call.